Thank you for listening to Overleverage, where we explore the big macro themes affecting investors, economic imbalances, giant geopolitical trends, tail risks and tremors, and everywhere risks are not being fully priced into markets. Remember, trading carries risk and all opinions are provided as general market commentary only. Please do your own research. Our risk warning will follow at the end. Hello and welcome to Overleverage from Finalto and uh, this is the podcast about all things markets and macro and this week we've got John Human again, our uh, expert on, on all things, particularly London markets that, that we talked about uh, before. Um, but John is uh, head of content at Vox, uh, Vox Markets, uh, former editor of Investors Chronicle. So thanks for joining us again, John. Thank you for having me. And this week it's all about central banks, um, which is going to be, well, it is a recurring theme. I think it's hard not to talk about central banks um, quite a lot on, on macro, uh, along macro themes. Uh, last time we talked about it was... Uh, on the show was uh, with Helen Thomas from Blow Money. Um, we were looking ahead to some of the, the big central bank uh, developments over the year, and that was ahead of those meetings that took place at the end of January um, into February. Um, and so just to, to recap, um, basically all, all the central banks, well, I say all, the, the Federal Reserve, the European Central Bank, the Bank of England and the Bank of Japan, which are, are seen as the big four, um, they all held. They didn't change anything, um, but they did offer some clues about where where we might be headed. Yeah. So to to recap, we've um, we've actually had um, the European Central Bank have another um, meeting um, at the beginning of March, and again they uh, didn't change policy, but very much did um, signal that uh, uh, that that cuts would be coming um, in in June. Uh, that seemed to be the messaging. Um, from from uh, Christine Lagarde, the ECB president, um, and I guess you know we're talking here about the Fed, the Bank of England, the ECB. They're all um, on hold for now, about to cut again. You know, I'm not 100 percent sure when that is. Mm. Um, and then the outlier, of course, is the Bank of Japan, which um, seems like it might well be about to raise rates, perhaps even. Um, next week at the March meeting. So um, there's been a lot of chatter about April, but actually it might it might even move by March. So that aside, though, um, central banks are, are are looking like they're on hold. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, you you would think first for uh, for sort of the Western, the Western uh, central banks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, John, you'll probably a bit find this a bit um, silly that we're navel gazing and, and picking apart sentences about you know what one central banker said and what nuanced commentary they offered because because basically they're all heading in the same direction, right? Yeah, I'm not a central bank watcher. I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, 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 of course it matters. Yeah. Um, they're trying to interpret the nuance, you know, of what, what someone meant uh, and what that might mean. But it fascinates. I mean, it, it, people love macro. it, but I, I just, it's just not yeah. for me. I'm a stock picker, really. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll come to that um, in due course, I think, because that, that's kind of the theme that we want to look at this week um, on, on central banks. It's less about the, uh, all the navel gazing, as I said, but more um, about the stock picking side of it and the kind of what, what the, the so what. Because um, everyone listens to central banks chatter, and I'm terrible for it. And we'll talk. We talk about inflation and central banks, and then people think, "Well, so what?" Um, so hopefully, John's going to help us out a bit with that. So, it, just as again, just to to re recap, we've had central banks basically saying that we're going to cut this year, but um, not not just yet, because inflation is still a little bit sticky. You had. Um, prices paid index from the US PMI. Again, this is really esoteric kind of economic data, but hopefully you stay with us. Um, you know, the price paid index was quite high. Services inflation is still pretty high. In Euro era, it's 4%. UK, 6.4%, around 6%. And then you've got this thing of where commodity and goods deflation is going to start to wane. So we've had a period of goods deflation that's helped um, the overall numbers, but that's going to start to end, and wages are a fact as well. So, how do you how do you see this year going, John? Have you got a, a kind of outlook on on the central banks? Am I? Am I... I mean, they're going to cut rates. At, yeah. at some point, probably, probably. You know, I mean, I guess you know, futurology when it comes <laughs> to start. Is it like? Is it, probably, is it June or is it May? Yeah. Before the end yeah, of the yeah. first half. Yeah. Okay. Before the end of the first. Yeah, half. I think that seems to be the the expectation now. I mean, economic data. 
has been mixed. There have been mm. some signs of, of, of improvement, some signs of strength, as you say, in the services side of things in particular. But there are still some slightly worrying worrying signs out there. You know, obviously the US has, has avoided recession, the UK has skirted around a recession, but, yeah. but that risk has, I don't think it's entirely gone away. Because like you say, inflation, the inflationary risks have not entirely gone away. Um, and they could still make life difficult, you know, at, at some point down the track. So, so yeah, I'm not, I, I can see why they're sort of hesitant to, to cut rates now. Um, uh, and I'm also, you know, because because inflation hasn't entirely, you know, inflation just haven't entirely receded. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, you know the, the economic data has been better, but but you know, it's, it's as I say, it's not it's not entirely clear that we're entirely out of the woods. Yeah, I think um, there's this fear of inflation reappearing. And Isabel Schnabel, who I think we talked about in the last one um, on central banks, she was out with comments about you know that. They're just not that certain and they need them um, th- that they could even start cutting and then have to pause and that's sort of not you know that's the sort of position where they're in where they're just not very confident about uh inflation and it risks the credibility so they're big on credibility of course central banks uh, we've also got this red sea scenario which may be playing into some of it um, i mean the red sea the red sea scenario is interesting i've had a view on this i mean it is a potential bottleneck you've got two bottlenecks because you've got the Suez uh, as well which is uh Struggling to get large ships through at the moment. Um, yeah, it's not blocked like it was that time. No, <laughs> it's got, uh, not serious. I'm talking about the wrong one. Pa- Panama. 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 Um, yeah, it's got some water issues. Yeah, it's quite important when you need. Kale Panama. Water <laughs> <laughs> but 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 you know, for for the perspective of, of the Suez, sorry, um, you know, it's ten days extra to get to get a container ship round yeah. round the Cape. Yeah. Um, so so yeah, it's sort of problematic, but it's not it's not as massively inflationary as as, as a blockage as, as you know supply chains drying up. Yeah. In the way they did before was. Um, so so that that on that side, I don't think the risk is is massively profound. Um, no, and I think um, the, the other side of the coin is this sort of the long and variable lagged effects of monetary policy. So mm-hmm. the the that. We don't. We haven't really seen the the effect of the hikes that have been through passed through the system. They've not really had an effect. Um, there's also a worry, a big worry. I think we had um, the Challenger jobs report, which actually mentioned AI as as a factor. Um, funnily enough, but the the Challenger jobs report um, started to point to layoffs, and I think there's this idea of labour hoarding that's been taking place, yeah. um, where employers who a couple of years ago were stuck with no workers desperate to get workers paying over the odds for workers don't want to get caught out again so they're hoarding labor um, and that means that perhaps there's some layoffs down the line so the situation right now is far less certain than it looks yeah yeah exactly so so you know if a central banker you know cuts now because the data's better as you say if the data suddenly worsens again mm-hmm. you know then they've got to reverse their that that you know that Direction and that, that as I say, looks very bad and credibility. They, they need credibility. It's their job to have <laughs> credibility. Um, and yeah. you know, they've, they've, you know, certain central bankers, and I will name no names, have done their very best to sort of blow their credibility up at times in the last couple of years. Yeah, I know the, the, the inconsistent messaging has been mm-hmm. has been notable. Um, so just if we move on a bit, so as I said at the beginning, you know, so what if central banks are cutting a bit or hiking a bit or whatever? What does that actually mean in terms of companies and investments well i think i mean if you think about it more broadly and this is sort of a view it's a, a guy that i do a podcast with regularly at vox jamie Con- constable for singer capital markets very knowledgeable guy and he looks at this stuff in a lot of detail um but but the point he he's made is that you know whether whether inflation is a bit stickier you know or there was a there are some inflation factors that are coming down the road what we're not going to go back to is this sort of this this benign period of yeah exactly uh, uh, that we had before uh, 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 and one that is supported by ultra low interest rates and deserve policies zero interest rate policies those days are done yeah um, absolutely I think in our, uh, I discussed with Helen that the, the the lumpy disinflation so you get some disinflation then it then it suddenly picks up again. Um, and it's we're living in a three four percent world, yeah, not, not yeah. a one two percent world. Precisely that. Yeah. Now, now what that means is that you know companies have to work smarter, harder, smarter to you know the the, the free the cheap money that they could build these businesses yeah. on has gone. Um, so so you know you, you, what you might see are you know certain companies that that you know were built for a low interest rate environment really struggling. 
Um, so companies that have over over leveraged. Ha. I've been I've been trying to work the title into into a podcast. It's taken till now for someone else to do it. So. Um, but you don't want to be over leveraged in, a, in an environment where yeah. you know, rates are not going to come down yeah. to the levels that you thought they were going to be forever. And I think that was the assumption that you know mm-hmm. zero mm-hmm. interest rate policies are here forever. Yeah. Um, and you you know you don't really want want companies that that are ultra sensitive to, to you know, the interest rate cycle. Um, and actually then, you know, cycle is the operative word. We're back in a cycle. Uh, oh, so you think so we are back in a cycle? cycle. The yeah. cycle has reignited. Well, Jamie Constable thinks this, and I tend to agree. I think mm-hmm. we, the, the cycle is back. And, and I have to say, from my perspective, it couldn't have come soon enough. Um, because you know, economic cycles are, are, are important, you mm-hmm. know, because you, know, you need, it's, it's sort of, Creative destruction, in, in yeah. a sense. Mm-hmm. You, know, you want bad companies to disappear, and, and they are. And they, I mean, the number yeah. of uh, insolvencies in in Britain has shot up mm. Uh, mm. in the last year. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you want bad companies to disappear uh, to create space for good companies to thrive and prosper, um, and, and and you and know, be more productive, and be which more productive generates more wealth, real wage growth, real wage yeah. growth, which is what <laughs> makes us all happy. <laughs> so, yeah. So, 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 you know, I, I think if that, if that is the case, and, you know, I, I think it is, I, I don't think maybe the, on reflection, people will look back at, you know, the years after the great financial crisis and the, what was supposed to be a temporary measure and that uh, turned out to be a you know, rather more permanent one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't think people are looking to go back to that anytime soon because, because you know, yeah. the, the kind of long t- term effects of, of, of zero interest rate policies have been damaging. Very, yeah. I think it's it's not called financial repression mm. for, for, for nothing. It, it, is, it is repressed or suppressed in the usual cycles. It's suppressed growth, yeah. productivity gains. Yep. Arguably, they're not in the US. They, they seem to have uh, had some technology gains that, that maybe offset some of that. Fracking, but, probably. <laughs> yeah. Fracking, I, I, I yeah. suspect. You know, the US being a major oil producer now has been the, you know, their salvation, really. Um, yeah. And you know because they, because you know, yes they've got big tech companies in Silicon Valley but mm-hmm. but you know that, those technologies that are produced by those those companies are available to the rest of the world. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But you know the fact that fracking you know being energy independent is has been huge for America absolutely huge um, in a way that we we aren't and I know I'm not advocating fracking sitting here right now in the UK <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. but but I think that's possibly why the US has escaped. Um, you know, without, without as much damage as we've perhaps seen here and in the Euro, mm-hmm, Eurozone, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Where, where Germany has turned off its nuclear energy. And we saw the, the effects of this and, uh, when the war happened in, mm. in Ukraine and you know, the sort of lack of energy independence and what that meant yeah. Um, yeah. for people. But that Precisely. Maybe, yeah. Um, but we are back in a cycle. Yeah. So if you're working on the principle that we're back in a cycle, that's the, that's the so what. Bit. Yeah. So, so if we are looking at how inflation moves and interest rates move and... Uh, and you know how economies move with them then then you know perhaps we should be looking at the stock market in a way that we perhaps haven't been for a long time is that it's, it's it's you know certain bits of it are are, are a cyclical uh, beast uh, yeah. and you know if we've been in a downturn which we have then perhaps we should look, be looking towards more cyclical sectors for for where the opportunity might lie certainly in the, in the short term at least so cyclical sectors might mean uh recruiters construction Construction, you know, yeah. Obviously, well, house builders. I mean, the Barrett and Redrow uh, consolidation has maybe pointed in a slightly different direction, but yeah, mm. they certainly mm. seems to be a bit more optimism around house builders in the UK. Um, oh, well, it couldn't get much worse, could it? <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I I read those Barrett numbers, and they were pretty shocking. Mm. The numbers are horrible. The, com- the number of completions is. I think they were down. Completions were down thirty-three and a half percent. Yeah, yeah. it's nasty. Yeah. It's yeah. nasty, um, you know, and that was an industry that was built, you know, again on, on, on cheap money, cheap mortgages, government handouts in the form of help to buy, um, <laughs> help to build, help to build, yeah. um, you know, and, and with with large amounts of the uh, the benefits reaped by shareholders and management, yeah, than, you know, the society at large. So, but there there, there was a cyclical sector which which could potentially benefit construction more generally, yeah, you know. Uh, so, you know, we we need infrastructure. The world needs infrastructure. So I think the yeah the infrastructure plays are are massive, aren't they? And it, mm. the latest um, survey data suggests the construction industry in the UK is actually looking up a bit. But it's impact. most it's a bit, optimistic it's been in two years. Um, I think PMIs were still in a little bit of contraction, but 
but heading in the yeah, right direction. Yeah. Um, but I guess more broadly, the infrastructure, and this is something I think we talked about um, in a previous episode, where you know this idea of um, emerging markets being mm. being somewhere where new infrastructure is going to play out over the next de- few decades, and it, all sorts of different types of infrastructure. Um, and that, that that demand is not going to go away. No, I don't think so. Um, so I look regularly um, at, at Vietnam as, a, as for some reason specifically. Um, we, we actually look after we we um, work with a company called Vietnam Holdings, which is an investment trust. Um, so yeah, I end up looking at Vietnam in quite quite a lot of detail. And you know, here you have a very good example of that infrastructure led growth coming through. Um, you know, huge amounts of capital being ploughed into transportation projects, yeah. uh, into to green energy projects, into uh, commercial real estate that can cope with, you know, another trend that you're probably going to talk about or have talked about elsewhere. But you know, the shift of, of manufacturing to to uh, friendshoring or whatever you want yeah. to call it. Um, so, so you know, the, there are a lot of reasons that are poised to benefit from this kind of capital investment. Um, commercial real estate is. Obviously, another fascinating sector um, well, that, I mean, in the UK, up, like it's... China, and I mean, yeah, I saw Canary something Canary Wharf sold for sixty percent discount. Yep. Um, the other day, um, China's Savage. real estate sector has been carnage. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not uh, it's not an, not an easy picture. It's no. not it's not a simple. Oh well, you know, construction is going to do well. No, it's, okay. it's not. I, I think that, you know, if you were targeting, it's a stock pickers market. The other, that's the other thing about cycle cycles yeah is that you've got to be in the right stocks yeah you know that's that's filtering out the ones that have, have overstretched themselves or whatever, whatever it might be or exposed to sort of the wrong kind of opportunity yeah um you know do you want to be building offices in london at the moment uh probably not but do you want to be building offices with in, a view for them for, for 10 years time or, or yeah. offices in, in vietnam or wherever else it might be yeah. in there perhaps you do or commercial sheds in vietnam um do you want commercial sheds in in, in the uk we built quite a few of those, but there is still there are still mm-hmm. shortages of capacity in some of these sectors, and and as we see as with cyclical upswing, you know that's 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 where the opportunities lie, where you've actually got you know, massive discounts, uh, you know across various sectors, you know we real estate commercial real estate house builders are trading at big discounts and the asset value as well, mm-hmm. um, and and obviously have the, the ability to to sort of control their their uh, land. Uh, acquisitions yeah. to, 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 to you know ensure that their the, the, the cash keeps keeps rolling in. Um, so so yeah, the cycle is, is where the opportunities lie. And you know w- look at, look at where we are in it. Look at how how bad things have got for certain sectors. And you know, recruiting numbers have been terrible, mm-hmm. absolutely mm-hmm. terrible. Um, but is that the bottom for them? Arguably, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, Interesting. You know, so yeah, so, yeah it's, uh, it's it's fascinating. You know, in the office market, we obviously the, this view persisted throughout COVID that no one would ever go back to an office again because yeah. it was <laughs> lovely sitting at home and you know working in your pa- working in your pants. <laughs> and I think everyone's got the right hump with that. <laughs> there were certain upsides to COVID, that's for sure. But yeah, this um, idea of the cycle. The problem with cycle is that it's got a down as well as an up. Mm. So people are going to have to think about that again. Yeah, but this is the asset allocation comes in, doesn't it? You know, if we think about the traditional way that you, you invest, you know, your 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 your, your cyclical um, opportunities should be balanced with defensive opportunities, or, or, or you know, ones that are demonstrating secular growth. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, through a cycle, technology obviously being being a, a classic example of that. Defensives, you know, I think would be things like energy, um, you know, where yeah. or, or um, you know, consumer staples, where demand doesn't doesn't wax and wane. Uh, at such a rate, um, but I think you know, given where we've been, the the, the upswing, you know, that, that that could last for a while. Um, you know, I, I used to edit the Investors Chronicle, which is called the Bible of Buy and Hold. Um, but but I, I do think you know, there is you know, in, in investing some degree of market timing. It always makes a little bit of sense as well. Yeah, definitely. As I say, I think uh, I mean, we've spoken about it before, but value is a is a is a on offer in the UK at the moment. It's it's a very yeah. out of favour market. It's very cheap. Very, it's very cheap. cheap. So, and, and, yeah. and a lot of that is, is to do with the fact that, you know, as well as poor sentiment towards the UK, it's, it's because, you know, there are a number of cyclical sectors that have been hit quite badly. So, uh, you know... Yeah, so I mean, some of this does tie into what we discussed um, yeah. in the previous yeah. episode about why the UK market is so underloved and cheap. Um, but it does present opportunities yeah. when the cycle turns. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So on that ha- slightly happier note with the UK market, um, thanks very much, John. Thank you for having me. Thank you.
Remember, all opinions, news, research, analysis, prices or other information is provided as general market commentary, not as investment advice, and all potential results discussed are not guaranteed to be achieved. The information may have been derived from publicly available sources, company reports, personal research or surveys. Past performance is not indicative of future performance. Trading carries risk of capital loss and the service is available to professional clients only.